Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Laurel Park. Naomi Tucker alongside Timmy T. How are we doing? <laughs> uh, doing well. Doing well. Doing very, very well. Got a lot of good action here today. A couple of third-level allowance races today on I this know. this mm -hmm. card. Uh, going short and long. So uh, looking forward to a big day here at Laurel Park. Yeah, and of course... Uh, Fridays means uh, time for the Stronic Five. We've got two races starting right here at Laurel Park that are part of the sequence. Race number nine here at Laurel Park. Race number 10, of course, here as well. So like A and B, no easy task, though. I know that the first leg is, uh, you've got to go pretty deep, right, Tim? Uh, I did. I, I went pretty deep in the first leg. I did, got two in, in uh, our second leg, uh, leg B. I single at Gulfstream Park and spread out a little bit in the other two, but we'll get to that uh, when we get to the Stronic Five, which gets kicked off in our race nine. And of course, uh, we do have some stakes action coming your way and next week on Saturday, Winter Carnival Day, Saturday, January the 29th, six stakes races, over half a million dollars in purses. And I'd say most most intrigued I am by the spectacular bid for straight three-year-old boys, seven furlongs, of course, the extra heat for straight three-year-old ladies, six furlongs, and a couple of Maryland bred stakes races. A couple of Maryland bred stakes races, but those early three-year-old races, uh, they're just a start and they go all through the spring uh, right up basically to Preakness and Tessio. Uh, they get longer as we go. They're always exciting when these three-year-old races and the th these three-year-old stakes get started here in Maryland in the spring. Uh, absolutely. Well, let's get going here. we got 10 races coming your way, so plenty to discuss. And look at the track right there. We are coined fast, looking in a pretty decent position there. In very, very good condition. We opened a little late this morning, but horses got the train. I gave the track crew a little bit longer to work on the track, and then we've got a nice uh, fast track on this sunny uh, January day. And do note, uh, runners and riders will be going straight to post today as a, you know, it's actually quite a sunny day with a beautiful fast track. And we're just going to get through uh, these 10 races. Uh, let's start with race number one, optional claimer starter allowance, six furlongs, the distance here. And Tim, you and I uh, look for a couple of similar horses in here. You can sure. see you go one, three, two, I go two, three, one. We'll start with Animated Moon, your top selection there. Look, he's looking for a fourth victory in a row. Uh, not only a fourth victory in a row, but look at the the figures he's been running out there at Penn National, a uh, low to mid 80s. If he can run back to any of those races, that's going to be good enough. Coming out of a two other than out there at uh, Penn National probably is getting some class relief here also mm -hmm. uh, this afternoon for a guy in uh, Flint Stites who comes down to Maryland and he spots his horses well and they usually run particularly good. So I'm looking for Animated Moon in the opener. Well, there's a couple of horses in here that have quite a good bit of form sure. coming into this race. I think it's actually highly competitive. Ultra Break is my top selection, the number two. Look, he's going to be trying to set the tone early from that low draw, and he's been able to carry himself well through the wire, now cuts back to six furlongs. I think that's yeah. perfect. I think him. that's the key. I think that's the key for Algebraic, getting back to three quarters of a mile. He was okay going seven eighths in his last start where he just got a little bit late, but his two previous races going five and a half and three quarters of a mile. Look what he ran into. Semper Fi, who would come back to win. Alpha Key Row, who would come back to win. That's mm -hmm. two starts ago. Yeah. Uh, he, he beat Zen Pai, who is in very, very good form, who would come back to win also two starts ago. So, look, he's been running against some tough ones. Turns back to three quarters of a mile. And uh, I like Algebraic also this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, I like him as well. Let's talk about race number two. Maiden claiming event, 25000 to $20,000. Six furlongs the distance. And we key uh, the early pick four, but this time... It's going to be you that uh, do, did a ticket for us. Normally we have Keith, so I guess you stepped uh, into his shoes quite nicely. Uh, I d well, I don't, we don't know about nicely yet. We'll have to see the result. But I single right out of the bat. I'm single, uh, singling on Senator Kelly uh, for Lacey Oda and Johan Rosado in race two. Three deep in race three. I go the one, the three, and the four. The four is my top pick in there. Get off my back in race uh, three. Race four, two, three, uh, nine in that mile event. And in race five, I go four deep there in that two lifetime nickel race. Three, four, seven, and nine. $18 ticket to get your uh, day started off in the early pick four. And both uh, you and I key around that single of yours, the number eight, Senator Kelly. Let's look at it. It's only race to date. That was uh, right here at Laurel Park going at six furlong. You can tell he 
kind of got a little bit of a slight bump at the start, void of much early speed, but does ramp it up in the final quarter. He, he does, and he does a couple things here I really like. There's the first thing he does. He goes right in between horses, very, very brave there, making his very, very first start. He'd run in to kick back all the way around there, and while he can't get to the run runaway winner, he passes horses from the 516th uh, pole uh, to the wire, tries all the way down there. It was a really, really uh, good effort. Nobody was going to get to Oski Wow Wow that day. Didn't matter. That was a good, strong debut. Ran a good, solid number. I think he comes back here and gets the job done. I, that, you, you know, that's the kind of effort you like to see a first-time starter have. If yeah. they're not going to mm -hmm. win, a positive effort where it looks like they did all the right things and it looks like Senator Kelly did all the right things in that last I, start. I mean, I thought it, he was very professional. I thought Johan gave him a good experience there. You, you see, kind of made him switch leads, but then once he straight it out, really powered home, I think it's going to do very mm -hmm. well in here. But I am worried about Colby Tough, though, the number two, who comes out of a very strong Maryland juvenile uh, champion field. He does, but he got beat 11 lengths. True. And in the race before, he ran well. I like him. He's in my exacta, uh, but this is how I landed on Senator Kelly over uh, Kobe Tuff. Two starts ago was a good race uh, behind a lot of hope. Now, I'm not sure what the running line is, the form there. His name's not there, but I did check. He did run second in that race. So the form, there's a mistake there. He did run second behind a lot of hope in that start. But that race track was over a good It was a, a name change, I do believe. Oh, was it a name yeah. change? Oh, there we go. <laughs> they don't, they don't uh, ooh, that's a tough one. Boy, that's a tough one. Yeah, another knock, was, uh, another Keith, knock. Keith Houston and I talked about that because oh, we were both wondering what had gone on there. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, that was over a good racetrack. He gets a fast racetrack for the first time in his career today. Throw out his first start. Didn't mean anything. Got to be 26 lengths. Good races on the grass, but he's going to have to handle it. Uh, mm -hmm. He is getting class relief, but again, so is Senator Kelly. So we'll have to see how it all shakes out for Kobe Tuff. I mean, that form did hold up well because Kobe Tuff actually beat home, in the, even though he was beaten so far, right? Beat home Gallant Gold, who ended up winning a claiming 25 right, level yep. yesterday. So the form itself does pretty decently in that race because like you said a lot of hope then came back and won a, with a 75 buyer first level optional claim so Kobe Tuff it kind of does hold up but I, I agree with you here I'm uh, all over Senator Kelly as well and both of us uh, use the number one and the number four to complete uh, our top four there race number three uh, claiming eight to six thousand dollars race uh, six and a half furlongs the distance here we'll talk about uh, the number four first because it's your top selection get off my back as well as, uh, I do believe, a play of the day for Keith. It is a play of the day for Keith. I think we have those notes. We have those printed out. If not, uh, this is what Keith says about uh, get off my back in today's uh, third race. Uh, he ran against the bias in his last two races. There you have. Uh, he's uh, faced a key rival. And he's getting a slight drop. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And he's absolutely right. He's getting the perfect spot. Uh, the perfect draw uh, to prompt and pound. So, okay, this is a 16-time winner, and he's been running into some salty customers, as Keith pointed out. Super Garner, uh, Kingston Pike, uh, three back. Mm -hmm. When getting back at, at this $10,000 level, that's where he's back today. A big race where he beat hard fought. Hard fought would come back and win yep. uh, the for other Damon uh, for Damon. And uh, three starts before that at that 12-5 uh, level. He's running for the uh, the 10 or the 8,000 here this afternoon. It's his level. He gets an easier bunch this afternoon. Uh, I like it off my back. I'm excited to get buyer's remorse here when you <laughs> and Keith are all over well, the number this four. A, he's a runner. He's earned he, no, $445,000. He, he absolutely He is knows a how to win 16 times. He's I, found I landed football. on fast loaded based on the fact that he's going to make his Laurel Park debut. He's been running at Charleston. I think he did well to get up for a narrow one last time, but I'm, I think he's going to enjoy the Laurel Park track configuration. He's been doing well, running, solid, putting on solid figures at Gulfstream Park. Uh, yeah, uh, those races from Gulfstream Park make him a solid player this afternoon. He's in good form. The numbers might not be as strong as you might think at uh, Charlestown, but he did run well. He mm -hmm. did win a first level allowance yeah. race in his last race. He gets some class relief this afternoon. That not, probably not a ton, but there is mm -hmm. some there. It was still a first level allowance race at uh, Charlestown. Yeah, so I, I give him a little bit of a little bit of an edge here because he's going to get to Laurel and I think it's going to suit him. But look, I'm not going against when you have the four <laughs> on top, when it's Keith's play of the day. Now, he's not here with us this morning, but the fact that he went and contacted us to make sure that we all knew that we should be playing uh, the number four in there means... 
He's a good guy. Isn't he, he? He's, he's a, a good he's a guy. Good one. We we have to we have to pay attention there. So the number four, get off my back in race number three. Keith Hustle's morning line odds maker play of the day. As we move on uh, to race number four, which is one turn one mile nickel claimers for fillies and mares four year old and up. And uh, Tim, you and I. Uh, See this very similarly here. Both landed on Mavillas uh, on the outside for John Salzman Jr. Look, uh, this mile at Laurel seems to be her speciality. She ran two very, very strong races here, two and three starts back at higher claiming levels. And she's been behind a multitude of next out winners. A multitude of next out winners. How about two back? She runs uh, second to the very, very good me, Cleopatra, and I, who I think is on a four win, win streak the other day. I and do and believe just so, yeah. One for fun the off. other day uh, here at uh, Laurel Park. But you're right, getting the class relief to the 5,000 today. She's run some very very good races going this one turn mile and she's got speed from the outside she can control it under uh, jd acosta yes I, I like marvelous a lot today yeah i like her as well but let's uh, go to a replay of the number two parched a ghost for thomas mcmahon javian toledo aboard again she made the most of a rail saving a real ground saving trip she kind of scooted through you can see well y you can kind of see her there she is, she, uh, is. she is the gray coming up there on the inside and she relishes running them down in the stretch she certainly does and this was a really really nice race for parts go she's probably on the worst part of the racetrack uh, yeah. this tends to be the rail and slop tends to be not the best place to be but she comes with a good finish. She just misses behind uh, one of my favorite Phillies, uh, Calypso Ghosts. It grays on a rainy day. It, it, <laughs> it holds up again. But look, you look back on her form, you're going to see a couple races going in a one-turn mile that are really nice races going back uh, to Colonial Downs last August. A good figure there. And two starts, uh, three starts ago uh, where she got the job done on in November going the one turn mile. So I think this works for Parch Ghost today in Javian Toledo. I think so as well. And then both of us also use Pastino's champion in number three for Claudio Gonzalez. She was part of a pace duel last time. Yep. Ended up giving in belatedly, but now gets back to the one mile in comparison to the mile and an eighth that she had to go last time. I, I think so. I think she's found the group there. She at least has a chance uh, to turn her form around a little bit and get yeah. a positive mm -hmm. finish. She's, she's been a little off of her form. She had some nice races earlier this year, uh, but that last race was a step in the right direction. The, she runs behind a runoff winner in Sir Leon, who wins off by, uh, by um, a six length. So Sierra Leone. Yeah, no, I, I think that this is a good group for her to kind of get yeah. back into. At least, you know, uh, feeling a bit more confident and running a couple horses down in sure. down the wire because that's what she likes to do. Race number five, no one is a two lifetime nickel claimer. One turn mile again, the distance here. But we do have a rainbow pick six that starts uh, right here. It's a good little race to kick things off with. And let's see how Callie plays it. She goes three deep here in this uh, first leg, five, seven, and the number nine. And then race number six three deep again three four and eleven in that maiden claiming event and then in race number seven she goes a little bit tighter using the one and the two air token and Baracho, the number two now i'm king around air token as well i feel like he's the class uh, act in that field and he can go any distance race number eight three deep six eight and ten there uh, they're gonna have a, have a look because she doesn't use a couple of uh, my key horses so definitely very uh, gutsy selections there the um number eight Actually, I, I'm thinking that this might be a typo here because we don't have uh, th we don't have the eight and the ten in number uh, race number eight. So we'll have a look uh, and come back to you with that one. I'll quickly read the last couple of horses that she uses: the six, the eight, and the ten in race number nine. There with the ten, Doom Scroller, Brittany Russell, Furster. I'm keeping my eye out uh, for that straight three-year-old because she's regally bred. Her dam was a great two winner. winner at Goldstream Park. Race number 10, she goes too deep using the nine and the 10 to hopefully still be alive in that last race. I like Haynes Fever and I also like Edict. It's also our video spotlight, $64.80, but keep a finger on the pulse there, which is a, a lovely Dutch saying that we like to use. AK, keep your eye out because I think we might have to make a couple of changes in race number eight. As you can see, six, eight, 10 might just have been a typo there. So let's go to race number five. Nickel Claimer, non is a two lifetime one turn mile here. 
And uh, Tim, both you and I uh, are on the same horse here, at least the same horse on top. That is Pained Music for me, the number nine. Look, he's a consistent performer. He just keeps on grinding. That's the kind of type that I like for this trip. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And since getting down to this nickel level in his last two starts now, both those races, one was at Charlestown, one was at Penn National, but they were good, solid efforts running second in both of those races. He's a bit on the improve right now, especially at this level. But this horse has some nice races earlier this year, right here in Maryland, up at Pimlico, uh, where he was second and fourth, fired good, strong numbers while going around the ground is 58-64. Either one of those races are good enough uh, to get back in the winner's circle this afternoon for Kieran McGee and Carlos Lopez. I feel like aside from the key horse for both of us, this is pretty a pretty deep field uh, in here. You landed on the number seven, just pick yeah. one for trainer Ferris. Allen, who two and three starts back, was doing pretty well. I I do think that five and a half was a little bit too short yeah. for him. I think he's going to enjoy the stretch out. I do. Uh, his best result since breaking his maiden was going seven eighths of a mile. That was three yeah. starts ago uh, where he only got beat ahead. That was a good positive race. The one turn mile should work for him uh, this afternoon. Eight to one on the line. But th this is the type of race uh, where you can get a price. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to clearly key around uh, the nine paint music for me, but I'm going to go, as you see, we went in totally different directions. <laughs> well, we did. I mean, I landed on Tiny Tin because his only victory to date was actually over course and distance over the one turn mile here, breaking his maiden. Uh, he's going to be a second time running against this level of competition right here at Laurel Park. So I'm giving him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt that perhaps uh, the trip is going to suit him uh, as well here. And, and he's, he's been freshened. You know, perhaps he'll come back with some of his better efforts. These figures hold up in here. When you look at this field, they're kind of evenly matched when it comes to these speed figures. The, they do. Uh, they, they hold up here, and after the first couple, it's very evenly matched. The outside, the 13 tradition. Yeah. Looks like he's trying to get back into a little bit of form for the red hot Rudy Sanchez Solomon. Don't leave any of Rudy's horses out right now. Just don't do it. Just, yeah, just, just, don't. just, just no. don't do it. No, he has honestly been really, really heating up here with his runners. They are firing all, all four sinless. Eight. They're firing on eight cylinders. Eight cylinders. They're firing on eight. There you go. What about, <laughs> what have we got, 12 feet Bugatti? No? Okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Just stay. Just stay. Stay with us. We're going to go uh, to a quick commercial break, but we'll be back. Pegasus, the divine winged horse that flew with heroes mounted for glory. Arrogant, gun runner, city of light, mucho gusto, and Nick's go. Racing, the thunder and the lightning on the track. Energy in the stands. Vibe. Fashion. Entertainment. All for one. Welcome back to Laurel Park. And oh, we were just watching that uh, Pegasus World Cup commercial. Eight days to go, Tim. Eight, days, eight days to go. You're going to leave me lonely all next week as Miss Tucker's on her way to Pegasus. Good luck down there. Have fun. I mean, I'm Get some sunshine. very much looking forward to this. This is going to be one incredible renewal with Life is Good and, of course, title defender Nick Go Two Breeders' Cup champions lining up yep. against each other. This is going to be... Uh, quite the race and really do wonder who's going to end up uh, in front because both of them are very very fast early but let's talk about race number six maiden claiming uh, ten thousand to eight thousand dollars six furlong the distance for the ladies here facing men as four and five year old i have a price plane here and i see that you kind of clocked on uh, to her as well the number five made my wish for trainer phil shown yeah. she's the most lightly raced filly in this entire field it's been two months since her debut race she actually broke with her head up straight in the air missed the kick by multiple lengths the race was kind of over then She's been back to the gate since, which is very, very good. She's been working sharpening at home, and she gets a steep drop in class from that maiden 25 to the maiden 10 level. I, I'm all over her. Uh, I, I think no this doubt. is her race. Uh, there's no doubt. I mean, that her debut, as, she, as you mentioned, she didn't get away, uh, draw a line through that. They paid $30,000. Uh, for this filly. She's in for the 10. They saw something uh, when they bought her, getting the relief she probably needs. Now, her yeah. works have been good, but they've been very well spaced. That's always a little bit of concern. Now, sometimes this time of the year, they get well spaced because you have to because of the weather right. and uh, track closures in the morning and whatnot, uh, or, or, or certainly different things. But yes, she's getting the relief she very well might need. 
Yeah, and then the Elba Chinche, I have her in my exact. She's uh, your topic. She took over early in her last start, wasn't able to hold off uh, Steely Band late, perhaps just a little bit more conservative ride because it looked like she had them all in the bag uh, in sort of the middle stages. Uh, it did, but she's going to get to sprint on a fast main track at this level for the second time. That was a good effort, as you mentioned. In that uh, last start, she's had two good works since uh, that last race. Now she needs to get away. Uh, she's had a couple races where she didn't get away uh, the best, but a good break. And her last two races, quite frankly, have been pretty good. Even that race yeah. on the mud, she only gets beat five lengths uh, while running fifth. But I think uh, Xavier Perez will be getting her out of there uh, pretty quickly with not a lot of time. Maybe Tipsy Tourist has got a little speed down towards rail, but this one's going to be well placed for sure. Yeah, I think Elba Jr. has got to try and, and take over yep. early again because that's kind of her rep. Yeah, Tipsy Tourist is pretty fast on the rail. Both of us uh, also had a look at Pearlyville, the number three for trainer Lacey Godet. Mm -hmm. She seems to be cycling up at the right timing, and her last two have shown really, really improvement in comparison mm -hmm. to a couple of other races further back. Uh, sure. Since she's gotten to this level while sprinting, her last three races have been uh, quite good. So she looks like she's on the improve, mm -hmm. and she stays at this level, which is good. If she'd stepped up, the improve wouldn't matter. But it does here uh, this afternoon. She's been very, very yeah. competitive in her last three starts, and Lacey pretty good off this 30- to 60-day little break. Oh, and race number seven, I'm pretty sure everyone's looking forward to this one. Oh Optional yeah. claimer, three other than. A couple of heavy hitters mm -hmm. lining up uh, in this field. Six furlong, the distance. We've got to start with the number one air token. I mean, let's have a look at the Hon Howard and Sandra Bender Memorial Stakes, uh, where you can see him right there. Now, that was not an easy race. You see, youngest of five there in front. Got away with a couple of slow reflections early, where she told me to go, trying to kick into it. And then you see air token in between horses, really having to hold his own. But he's not giving up. And you see where she told me to go on his outside. Nine times stakes winner, right? Air Token is here about to run him down. He is about to run him down. This was a really, uh, really big race for, for Air Token. And earlier in the race, he'd gotten a little steady uh, past half mile pole. I don't think it made the difference in the end. But that was a tough heat. Mm -hmm. uh, threes over deuces, young as a five. Yeah. He ran a very, very credible race uh, that afternoon. I don't think we've got any threes over deuces or where she told me to go in this afternoon's heat. So it's very, very hard. Uh, to get around him. He's had a very yeah. sharp work January 15th since that last effort. So that was a big race. I don't mind the fence. He's run well from down there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. J.D. Acosta will uh, work out a trip as he usually does. Just an incredibly tough performer. Very yes. flexible as well. Can go any distance. It seems uh, Jose Corrales has done a phenomenal job with him. Uh, he has. And, it, you know, he's been in very good form all year. Take out the turf race, which he didn't do, uh, handle. And then he went out to the Charlestown mm -hmm. Classic at 190 to 1. I mean, clearly that's not, not <laughs> going to work. It was a little bit. You take, you take those races there. away. It was indeed. And that wasn't his fault. And you take those races away, and uh, you've got a horse in very good form. Yeah, I really, really enjoy seeing uh, this uh, five-year-old, uh, his stuff on the track. And I can't see past him, but when you start looking at some others, sure. the number two Baracho uh, kind of catches your eye as well, comes out of a stakes event uh, at Parks. This will be second start with the Nesbarm. I think that means he can continue to start getting back yes. up to those sort of mid-80 numbers mm -hmm. because we know what Jimmy Nes does with horses that arrive in his barn. He kind of tries to figure them out and places them in uh, good spots and, and moves them back up. They get better. And simply, uh, the majority of them yep. just simply <laughs> get better. And uh, took a big swing uh, first in Jamie's barn in that stake. Uh, ends up backing up, getting beat seven lengths. I can guarantee you this horse runs better uh, this afternoon mm -hmm. and gets back uh, to those type of races that he's been running earlier this year at Churchill Downs and up at Parks. Now, he did run into a pretty tough air token, so he's going to have to get – yeah better by a considerable amount for sure to get the job done but uh we know it's well within uh, jamie ness's wheelhouse to do that i mean what would be a strategy to beat air toe just get the jump on him and try and stay in front of him uh, maybe i mean this horse has shown speed uh, in the past and run uh, quite well there's not a ton of other speed in the race uh, maybe that's uh, maybe that's what Jamie Rodriguez and Jamie Ness decide to do. I mean, Let's Redeem Eddie was him. the other speedster, speed, and he's, he's not he's not lining yeah. up. So you might just 
think that that could be the key to this race. And then, of course, you have to give some credit to the veteran runner, Arthur is Hope, who looped the field whilst gearing up against, you know, a tough couple of runners in there, including stakes winner threes over deuces, like you highlighted, yeah. won't be lining up uh, in here. And then you had a look at the number three, Whiskey and You as well, who I included too. Have to move on, though, because we've got a couple of other tough races coming your way. Another three other than event, optional claimer, mile and eighth here, race number eight. Both uh, you and I look towards the number to plot the DOS. Really tough campaigner as well for trainer Michael Tron, but it's going to be his third start after the layoff. Look, he got thrown in deep after, after yeah. his break. You know, two stakes events and definitely in his last run, the Robert T. Manfusa, I felt like he was gearing back up in terms of his fitness. Yeah, he's coming off a lifetime best in that race, and you're absolutely right. Since winning his second level allowance condition, he's been in three consecutive stakes where he's gotten a little bit better. This will be th third off a layoff this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very, very credible race behind Cord Maker in the Manfuso, as you mentioned. He's probably getting a little relief here today. Just, uh, yeah, actually, there's probably no doubt. He's getting a little relief yeah. here today. He's in a good form for, for Mike uh, Trombetta. And you look back on his form, and you're going to see some races where he's run before that 95. Good, strong figures. One of them going a mile and eighth where he ran an 89, got beat uh, two lengths while running uh, second that day. So, yeah, I, I like Plot the Dots uh, this afternoon. I think he can get the trip. Uh, to get the job done. I do as well, but let's have a look at the last race of the rail runner in here, the number yeah. one gentleman, Joe, for trainer Hamilton Smith, who dropped back throughout the race, but then he put his running shoes on on the home turn, looped wide, and just kept on rallying. Yeah, he was down inside in the worst of it, taking the worst of it, taking the worst of it, and you're right. He dropped back a little bit on the turn, then uh, Dennis Arroyo got him to the outside. Once he got to the outside, he got a little belly low. It wasn't quite enough, but he's trying all the way down to the wire, ran a good solid figure that day in an 82 in a really, really good effort. He's already a winner going nine furlongs uh, on his form. That was three starts ago here at uh, Laurel Park. That was an off-the-turf event, but it held together with eight horses, so yeah. it wasn't a give-me. He had to do some work. Uh, so, and I like, I think he'll be pretty well spotted with that inside draw. I, I think so as well, especially how Dennis was able to then take him back and loop him around. Yep. I don't see why that couldn't happen today. He'd split some horses because he's definitely professional enough for it. Race number nine starts the Stronic five sequence. And uh, Tim, I know you had a look. I, I know did. that this is a, a field that you're gonna go deep. And as you can see, leg A and B right here with us, Santa Anita Park for leg C, leg D, Goldstream Park, and leg E, Golden Gate Field. So four different tracks, five races, all in the span of one hour. Talking about some high action, and possible quite the payout as well. $96 ticket. Leg A right here at Laurel Park. This is a maiden 40. I go four deep here in this race. I use the three, the four, the eight, and the 10. The three, Violet Jessup is my price play of the day. And uh, for Ferris Allen, I like that one. But I like that Miss Fox Ann is going to run a better race than she did in her most recent start. In a race, our race 10, leg B, too deep there. I use the 9 and the 10. We know who they are, Haynes Fever and Edick. In a leg C, out there at uh, Santa Anita Park, I wanted to go five deep here. I really wanted to push the all button, to be honest with you. But I used four of the six runners. I used one, two, the four, and the six. Leg D, Gulfstream. Park, their race nine. I'm going to single on the seven. Sister Nell, Todd Pletcher coming out of a uh, maiden breaking score, ran a big solid number. That was on the turf. I believe we take on the synthetic uh, this afternoon. Yes, they're on the tapita. Yep, or on the tapita this afternoon. Won't matter. I think that one gets the job done. There's my single. And then I don't single at Golden Gate. <laughs> You'd think I'd learn by now, and I did. I got one, three, and seven out there at Golden Gate, leg E, to finish out this Stronic. Uh, five a sequence. Good luck if you pay, play along. It always pays uh, well. Get a buddy, split that ticket, go thirds, whatever. Just Agreed. get in. It, it tends to pay incredibly well. Let's talk about race number nine, that maiden claiming event, 40 to 32,000 for the straight three-year-old Phillies. Six furlongs, the distance. Look, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't in love with any of the experienced runners in here, so I key <laughs> around the first-time starters. I landed on the number 10 doom scroller on the outside for trainer Brittany Russell. Now, we know that the Russell Barn prepares their firsters to be ready to fire on first asking. Plus, 
She's very well bred. Her damn Devil's yep. Cave was a great two winner at Gulfstream Park over mile and 16, with topping out at the 92 buyer. He says two siblings that have run to date, including a first time out winner, Lucifer's Lair, who's a half sister, who uh, made it all happen over five and a half furlongs. This and in a maiden special weight at Saratoga. So I'm thinking, you know what, Doom Scroller, please prove me right in here and get your picture taken. Uh, she very outside. well is it very well might breaking from the outside is going to need to break straight. A lot of yes. horses down th toward the inside uh, could be a little bit of a factor. But the dam won at second asking and yeah. then was second in her third start. So she was precocious enough, been working well. We know uh, that Brittany's very, very tough, uh, tough with these. And, of course, we both have her in our top two. Yeah, and you have a price pay, though. I do. You were highlighting it earlier. I do. Uh, Violet Jessup for uh, Ferris Allen. And uh, her most recent race may be a little bit better than it appears. She was getting okay. on the main track for the first time in her career, stretching out to seven-eighths of a mile for the first time in her career, and she didn't even get fast. She hooked a muddy racetrack. She's going to get a fast racetrack here this afternoon. She's going to turn back to three-quarters of a mile. Yep. And her races in Canada over the synthetic, they were all good efforts so the fast main track here today could make the difference i'm going to take her as my price play of the day i like it you're selling me on her there i think a lot of people's attention will go to the number four makes fox San as well or her, sure. her debut race would be good enough to win this i'm just hoping that perhaps he had a bad day she showed her ability on that first race she certainly has and and dale bennett does the right thing she she came back in mid-december uh didn't run well as a, a dollar even close to an even money favorite yeah uh gives her a little bit of time comes back with a couple works or one work anyway you have to think miss fox Ann comes back and runs better this afternoon she's clearly better than she was uh here her first time out at lower park and keep in mind it's not like she ran that first time out at delaware or charlestown or somewhere else she ran first time out in that nice second place finish right here at laurel so yeah. i expect better yeah, you have to include her in your Stronic 5 ticket as well as in your uh, other exotic wagers that include this race because I, I, you can't, we have her in third, but you can't be sitting on, on Miss Foxanne either. Final race on the card, Nightcap, uh, Nickel Claimers conditioned one turn, one mile the distance. We have a video spotlight on the two horses that both you and I key around. Yep. That is the number nine, Hayden's Fever, and the number 10, Edict, and you see them uh, both coming up there. Now, Edict had the inside draw kind of slip back a little bit. Haynes Fever actually was kind of used uh, to get that form of placement, and I think Haynes Fever also just did a bit more running. So she definitely, in my books, ran the harder race than Edict did. But I'm flipping them around because I feel like that second wire here, the configuration is actually going to suit a closure like Edict a little bit more. Because you can see Haynes Fever's got the jump on Edict, stays in front of her. But Edict is that more of that grinder type, I feel. So that, that's my two cents on no, it. No, no, look, it, it, and, and very, uh, very well taken. Uh, here on the outside is a percher going to pass them all, uh, one for uh, Anthony Pecorero. But both these uh, horses ran a very, very good uh, race that particular day. Haynes Fever's a 10 times winner, 10 time winner and he seems to be getting back into his form. I landed on Haynes Fever simply because Haynes Fever's uh, coming out of the red hot Rudy Sanchez Salmon Bar, that, who's point, winning yeah. at about 40% <laughs> uh, right now. And you look back on his form, the races are there going back earlier this year. Take nothing away from Edict. This one's been in really, really good form for Ned yep. Allard. Came off a two-year break, just under a two-year break, and has run very uh, very well for Ned, who had himself a very good 2021, hitting at about 22%. So well, I think it comes down to those two. I think we're on the right two horses, and then the rest might be, uh, let's see. I hope we are indeed. Let's catch up with some of the news from the Maryland Circuit in Lightning Round. Let's have a look at the current jockey standings. Now, Javian Toledo is continuing the way he finished as a champion of the Laurel Park meet that was concluded last year. He is. Uh, Perez and uh, Xavier and uh, Kevin Gomez 
you know, about three behind, as you can see, because I can do simple math. Thank <laughs> you, thanks to my kids. Well I done. have to do all the time. You like that? <laughs> yeah, but look, it's going to be competitive. Uh, we're running 10 a day. There's going to be a lot more opportunities uh, for these riders to win some more races. So uh, it may not be as easy on Mr. Toledo, but he's got the backing of some big barns that makes it makes it a little bit easier. Absolutely. Let's have a look at the trainer standings, because you were already highlighted how really Sanchez Solomon has really started to heat up. He does, but it, it, this is a, the trainer's thing. It's, a, it's an attrition war. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to have the numbers if you're going to beat Claudio. Claudio has, has the, the numbers and runs uh, a lot of horses. But interesting thing about Claudio, when you look last year, uh, leading trainer here, when you look at the percentage, he did not train as a, at a highest percentage as Kira McGee and uh, Jamie Ness, but he did win a lot of races, more races locally mm -hmm. uh, than those other two uh, conditioners. But uh, look, Jerry Robb, always tough. Jose Corrales, look at that, three wins. He's on the board. Got to like that. Yeah. So there you have it. Let's hope he gets another one today yes, with our one today. token. Let's move on uh, to highlight a couple of good performances by some of the jockeys in our colony Le yesterday. We had two doubles. We had a Double for Dennis Arujo on race in race two behind the cows as well as race four. Gallon Gold, look at that. Last two first in the center of the track. You got a highlight. And of course, Victor Carrasco with the double as well. Maggie's bid and one more factor. Yeah, both these wins for Dennis Arujo for uh, Mr. Salzman, John Salzman Sr. That, that is a big day. But look, this one just gets out into what do I like to call it? Clean air on the highest part of the racetrack, probably the driest and hardest part of the racetrack, and just keeps coming and gets the job done there but congratulations to both Aurora and uh, Victor Carrasco. Well, and as we look ahead at the Pegasus World Cup weekend coming your way eight days until that renewal post position the draw will be on a Tuesday for the three Pegasus World Cup racing which also means the first edition of the Philly and Mare turf that's a grade three over mile and 16 half a million dollar in prize money for the ladies and then the million dollar grade one Turf Mile and 316. Of course, we got Colonel Liam trying to defend his title. And then the feature race, the Grade One Pegasus World Cup Mile and an $83 million on the line. I highlighted it. Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile Champion Life is good. Breeders' Cup Classic winner, Nick's Go. I think it's safe to say who we're, we're going to be rooting for in the Pegasus World Cup. I, I think that's pretty safe to say, but it's a big <laughs> day. And come out here because we have a big day uh, that day. Also, you'll be able to bet on the races uh, from a Gulfstream Park. You'll be able to see my co-host, uh, Naomi Tucker, uh, down there in uh, the sunshine. But uh, always a big day, and it's a big day here also. So uh, make sure you come out and see us. Yeah, and final point in lightning round. want to highlight that Wanamaker's, uh, our friends over there, of course, highlighted by Liza Hendricks, will be putting up uh, 33 hips for their January sale. Now, the auction will be open for a week in total. Live bidding uh, starts at 8 a.m. E.T. Eastern time on January the 19th. First listing will be closing on January the 27th at 5 p.m. ET. And then the other listings will end in three minute increments. So on live thoroughbred auctions, uh, do we also have 12 stallion seasons on offer? And the proceeds of those will be donated to Love My Pities, which is a nonprofit rescue and rehabilitation program for dogs coming in from high kill and rural shelters, which I think is a wonderful way of giving back to the community so yeah go have a look at wanamakers go to wanamakers.com uh, you can see there the beautiful homepage uh, of the website and uh, they tend to feature a lot of the maryland breads as well uh, they do and as you mentioned uh for a good cause uh with the proceeds going there so that's that's always important everyone's doing uh doing their best to do the best for all animals Absolutely. And that will conclude our handicapping show this morning. I will be back this afternoon with Cali Franz. So I'm going to say uh, goodbye to you, Tim, but we'll see you back again tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be back again tomorrow. I'm, I'm done for the afternoon, but uh, you guys uh, can carry on. I'm sure you'll do a great job, but I'll be watching. Don't you worry. Okay. Well, give us some feedback uh, whilst you're at it. Dave Rotman will be up next with Scratches and Changes. Good luck, everyone.